Increasing the PPQ value in your project raises the CPU load. And this is why. Hi. Thank you very much for all your support. I appreciate very much all of you who subscribed. And please to all who haven't until now, just click this little button. It doesn't cost you anything, but helps me running this channel. This is the first part to fulfill a user request. Xbits ask for, personally, still don't know how different PPQ value affects the CPU usage, for example. For this video, please note, I'm not a DSP programmer. This is a personal and basic approach of how things are making sense to me. So please question my theories and take them only as an idea or starting point for your own researches and findings. Second, this topic is very deep. I try to break it down as much as I can that hopefully everybody can follow. The handling and impact of PPQ settings seem to be still a mystery in FL Studio. First, we have to find out what this actually does. PPQ can be set in the project general settings and it's labeled time base. The manual says it sets the event resolution for the current project in pulses per quarter note. Please assume these 60 bars would represent such a quarter note and the project is set to a PPQ value of 96. Means we have divided this quarter note into 96 pieces. The starting point of each of these 96 notes I placed into this period of time now represents a point of time where FL Studio samples the state of what happens in the whole program. Is there any kind of clip starting in the playlist? Is there any note starting? Which note? Which velocity? Is there any event automation happening? For which parameter? Which value? Is there an automation node happening? Again, which parameters? Which value? Does any modulator like an LFO change any registered parameter of a plugin or the mixer? And so on. All this happens only in this moment of time. And this happens every time, over and over again, at every single node in our example. And the bigger the project gets, the more pattern and automation clips you have created. The more plugins you have loaded, which all have registered every single parameter, the more work intense it gets to question the state of everything at every single point in time. Now we make a little journey into time. If we break down the beats per minute of our project, which is 120, into how long one quarter note lasts, we get 500 milliseconds. Our actual setting of pulses per quarter note of 96 means that these 500 milliseconds are divided into 96 pieces. This means each piece lasts 5.2 milliseconds. Every 5.2 milliseconds FL Studio does the sole work to sample all this data. This equals to a frequency of 192 Hz. You like to know how this sounds? One can hear a bit the nailing of the saw when it starts the new cycle at full volume. But to be honest, it's more imagination than actual hearing. And this rapidly, every time a saw cycle hits at full volume, FL Studio collects all this data mentioned before. Now we go a step further and raise the PPQ setting to the double. FL Studio has to do this whole work now in the half of the time. Every 2.6 milliseconds, the program has to collect all this data. This sounds like this. Let's cut this again in half with the setting of 384 pulses per quarter note. 1.3 milliseconds. 768 pulses, which equals 0.65 milliseconds. 
which are node point 52 milliseconds and a frequency of 1920 hertz. We go now back to school and look into the definition of physical power. Power is the rate at which work is done or energy is transferred in a unit of time. Power is increased if work is done faster or energy is transferred in less time. It's always the same story. If you go slowly up a little hill, it's not a big deal. But if you run up this hill rapidly, means doing the same but much faster, your lungs will tell you something different. The CPU meter in FL Studio can be regarded a little bit as a power meter. Don't get me wrong here, it isn't. But there are similarities. If you do more work in the same time, for example play more voices, have more plugins running, the CPU load raises. You raised more power. If you collect the same amount of data in shorter periods of time, like you do by increasing the PPQ, you raised more power. To prove my statement, let's go another way. At 768 PPQ, we've got a CPU load in this example of 17%. This is by the way not with an empty project, but with 90 Citrus loaded. Going back to 384 PPQ, we cut the CPU nearly in half. Watch what happens if I raise the project tempo. By doubling the project tempo, I did basically the same like doubling the PPQ from 384 to 768. I forced FL Studio to collect the data in half of the time. And you see we are ending up with the same CPU load like before. By raising either the PPQ value or the project tempo, we are giving FL Studio less and less time to do the same amount of work, collecting all the needed data. This is what raises the CPU hit. Some might ask why this even happens if the sequencer doesn't run. Does FL Studio collect any data even in these situations? Yes, it has to. Even with a stopped sequencer, you can play notes live. You can change parameters with your mouse or with a MIDI controller. You can modulate a parameter with an LFO. This internal time base, this resolution of when all this data is sampled, is running all the time like an invisible second sequencer, which starts when you launch the program and not stops before you close it. Conclusion: The higher we set the PPQ or the higher we set the project tempo, the faster FL Studio has to collect the required data. The higher the power, the higher the CPU load. Now we have to look the other way around. Why do I get this warning when I lower the PPQ setting? What does mean loss of data? Will I lose my nodes or my automation? Short answer, no. Let's look at this example. I have inserted here some nodes to reflect how detailed I can place them at different PPQ settings. The top node stays untouched and will be used as a reference point. At the PPQ of 96, I select the last node and with snap to grid set to none, I move it over as little as I can. This is the smallest change available at this resolution. We go to 192 PPQ. Grab the next node and try to shift it again as little as we can. We do the same with 384 and 768 PPQ. We already do changes here which are smaller than a 2048th note and it seems we have reached the end of the line. At 960 PPQ the note snaps either to the same place of the last note of 768 PPQ or to the beginning of the part. It seems when editing notes in the Piano Roll Editor, the most precise setting possible is at 768 PPQ. Setting it even higher doesn't have any impact at all. That was the preparation. Now let's have a look what happens when we lower the value. From the 960 PPQ, which didn't have had any impact, we go back to the 768 value. And please don't get fooled by the moving of the notes. 
this is just the decrease of zoom. Watch just the differences between the notes. Going back to 768 didn't change anything, as this was the last part we were able to change to something different. Now 384. This is what happens. The starting point of the note we moved at the level of 768 snapped back to the beginning. If the program wouldn't reposition the note, FL Studio could not recognize anymore that this note even started. With the lower PPQ value, it now checks here and here if something happens. The old starting point was in between and would have been ignored. To prevent that something could be ignored is the reason for this shifting in time back to a position where the program will recognize it. At 192, the next note snaps back. Again, the same story. And finally, the next one at 96 ppq. The loss of data doesn't mean that you lose any events. It means that the timing of the events is changed to the next point where the program can still recognize that it happens. So you lose precision, but nothing else. You don't have to worry about this warning too much. For example, if you set the PPQ to maximum to get a higher zoom level and afterwards you go back without moving anything around, your project will not be changed at all. These are the basics of PPQ settings. If higher PPQ settings really make sense and if there are any workarounds would go beyond the scope of this introduction video. In my opinion, values of 96 and 192 PPQ, which do not even tax older CPUs like mine, are precise enough for 95% of all needs. For the other 5%, there are many workarounds. But we are saving this for a later video, as I want to prove what I'm saying. Thank you for watching.